have to change it so I don't get in trouble with YouTube, with the YouTube police. YouTube police. <laughs> Scary. They're probably watching this right now and monitoring our conversation. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Steve, can you hear me okay? Testing I can hear two. you just fine, yes. Okay, cool. Well, we are here and we are doing a live session for you guys today on the old acoustic guitar workshop. Thank you for being here. I'm I'm Steve Stein. Am I drunk? <laughs> no, I'm not drunk. I haven't even started drinking yet. Uh, I'm Dan Denley. That's my name. Uh, founder of GuitarZoom.com. This is my friend Steve Stein. Hello. Uh, guitar instructor and player extraordinaire. Today we're doing a uh, acoustic workshop for you guys. This is one of many. So if you enjoy today's session, you might want to click subscribe and notify so you can get uh, notified notified of the next one we're going to be doing we're going to put all of these in a big playlist for you right there on the guitar zoom youtube channel uh or the steve stein youtube channel i'm not sure where where they'll they'll end up you can subscribe to both those channels if you want to make sure you don't miss it if you want to learn about ocean strumming technique that's what steve's gonna be talking about today is this ocean strumming technique which is really cool um, keep watching. If you want to learn it even faster, you can check out Steve's new course. It's called Acoustic Guitar by Steve Stein, and it's available at guitarzoom.com. How are you, Steve? I am good. How are you, Dan? I'm good, man. I'm glad to be here with you doing what you do, and I'm glad all of you guys are enjoying, or you're, you're joining us. If you have questions, comments, make sure you put them in the little comment box or the chat box or wherever you're watching this. We'll try to get to those. And um, thank you so much for being here. It means the world you take time out to be with Steve and I today. So take it away, my friend. All right. Well, uh, just real quick, strumming. Uh, the reason why I came up with this thing I call organic strumming or ocean strumming or whatever you want to call it, it's really anti-strumming patterns. And it's not because I don't like strumming patterns. It's because... When I first started teaching, um, one of the first elements that I got myself into with teaching was teaching a group guitar class uh, for a company called Schmidt Music, which is a, a big music company out here in the Midwest, upper Midwest. And uh, so I was teaching a class, so I made my own book, and you know I'd never done any of this stuff before, and I was teaching, you know, I, it was a fairly successful class. And what I did was I taught them some chords and then I taught them some strumming patterns and then I taught them some songs and whatever and then you know had a second class and they would continue on and so on. What I realized in by like the third class is that I'd kind of created these robots because every song that they were playing the strum sounded exactly the same mm -hmm. and it was of course my fault because I had done what I thought I was supposed to do, which, you know, I still do to a certain degree, but I always have this conversation in any of my lessons or guitar courses or whatever, where strumming patterns sometimes are really good things, but if you only know one or two or three strumming patterns, everything kind of sounds the same. Every time you go to play, you play the same patterns over and over and over. So what I did was I revamped my discussion for my group classes, and of course that went on to where we are now. In Instead of teaching strumming patterns and that it, that's it having a conversation about what i call ocean strumming or organic strumming so basically if you think about it now i'm not going to worry about any chords all i'm going to do is i'm going to touch the strings and i'm going to scratch and you're just going to hear this okay so i'm eliminating the chord entirely we could make any chord you want but but for now i'm not worried about which strings i'm hitting or not hitting i just want to strum the, the strings now a strumming pattern would teach us to go you know which is great. And sometimes we need a strumming pattern. And sometimes in our education, a strumming pattern is exactly what we should be learning. So again, don't get me wrong that strumming patterns are bad. It's just in the real world, when you're playing a song in a band or with another musician or whatever, you don't just strum the same pattern for five minutes, every five minute song, right? Just over and over and over. You learn to listen to the music and respond to the music. So what I started teaching people how to do was instead of just learning how to play strumming patterns, what we would do is we would listen to the song or whatever situation we found ourselves in, and we would find the beat, what we would consider to be the beat. So let's say we're listening to a song and you start moving your head here, right? Or you start snapping your fingers here or whatever. 
okay? So not worrying about exactly the tempo, but that's what we're feeling. As we're listening to this song, we hear the drums and we, we think this. So what I do is I start putting my downs there. Okay, so that's where my beat is. That's where um, I'm going to put my down strums and set everything else up. So now, again, instead of going into a strumming pattern, what I'm going to do is be aware that I have up strums that exist in between those down strums. And yes, I might need to practice this stuff a little bit, right? So I have my downs here. I have my ups here. And the most important thing is, is understanding that your downs and your ups exist together. At any time, you can play just the downs. And at any time, you can add the ups in between. And what you're going to notice is my hand never changes. The, the motion of my strumming never changes. I never speed up or slow down. I just keep the thing going. And I always tell people, think about your arm as like a metronome. You're just moving back and forth. And you're electing at any time to hit those down strums. And this is where the, the ocean strumming comes in is instead of thinking about it as a prescribed pattern, like down, 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 up, down, all you're going to do is you're going to try and shut your brain off, and you're going to try and hit the strings when you strum. You're going to try and strum randomly, and this is how it works. Now, I know my tempo is here, and I know I've got ups in between. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let me switch to this camera, okay? What I'm going to do... <clears throat> is I'm going to start strumming all of them. And if you've got your guitar with, do this with me. So you're going to be start strumming all of these. And what you're going to do is when I say away, you're going to continue strumming, but you're going to move away from the strings. So your arm doesn't stop moving. You're just not hitting anything. So the motion of your hand doesn't stop. You don't stop and, you know, eat a sandwich. You keep going. Your arm keeps going. And when I say back, you're going to move back in and you're going to start strumming again. You might move in in a different place than I move in, right? Because I already know I'm going to move in because I'm saying it, right? So when you move in, you're just going to start strumming again. Now what's going to happen is we're both moving at the same tempo. And we're both moving away. And we're both moving in. We might move in at different times, but the tempo doesn't change, right? So if I do this, let's play together. Strum everybody. Now move away and keep moving. Now move back in. Now move away and back in and away and back in. And what you do is you start learning that you create space or rests, if you will, in music by moving away. And then when you come back in, you create energy by strumming. And you can strum a little bit or you can strum a lot. You can just maybe move in for a little bit. And what actually happens with this practice is you learn to move in and out. And you're not restrained by down, 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 up, down, or something like that. You're just moving back and forth. And after a while, what actually happens is you can start hearing some things that you might want. Like you might hear, bum, bum, bum. So you're doing this and you go... And then you move away again. Dun, dun, dun. Right? Dun, 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 dun. So what I'm doing is I'm responding to the rhythms that I'm hearing in my head, the grooves that I'm hearing in my head, and I'm able to play those. I'm not having to find everything by one end, a two end, or, you know, down, down, up, that sort of thing. I'm simply playing. So as I listen to the song... See, I can decide when I want to strum a little more or a little less. When I want more energy, I can strum more. And when I want to leave some breath, I strum less. And I always think of it like the reason it's called ocean strumming is because if you watch the ocean, if you ever just get a chance to sit and watch the ocean, it's very unpredictable. Like the waves are very unpredictable. You never know when they're going to be really aggressive and when they're going to be really mellow and where there's going to be a lot of them or less of them. All of that kind of thing and the same thing happens when we strum. To really engage somebody, if I just go... For 
five minutes, after a while, you're going to want to throw a brick at my head because there's just, it's just the same <laughs> thing. It's just like, stop, right? Where if I can, and again, some songs actually kind of need that driving. Some songs need that, okay? If I was going... Right? But it's still not exactly the same every time I strum. There's still dynamics happening where I'm playing a little louder and softer in different places, where I'm playing a little more or a little less in places. It's still happening. You're just not noticing because you're just accepting it as music as I play. You're just listening going, oh yeah, that, that works, right? Sure. So instead of going... For the entire song, you know, at any time... can change it up. I can add variety. I don't have to. I'm not obligated to, but I can. That's the whole point of ocean strumming. I love it, man. This is such a cool technique, and I love the, the analogy of the ocean and it being unpredictable. What's interesting to me is that the predictability of it is it's very predictable in, in the right hand or the strumming hand, which is it's like the metronome that you mentioned. It doesn't it's doing the exact same thing. The only thing is changing either you're playing or you're not, but that you're moving in or you're out. And uh, that whole concept of being able to get out of the mindset of this strict rhythm of one e and a two e and a three e and a or you know down up down up down up whatever, you just throw that right out the window. And this is a whole new perspective on strumming that I I love the way you teach this, guys. This ocean strumming technique. If you're if you like this and you're like yes I want more of that, uh, this is one small technique that Steve teaches in his new course called Acoustic Guitar by Steve Stein. It's available for you at GuitarZoom.com. Uh, it's a complete A to Z course, and if you would like to take advantage of that, you can find that course at GuitarZoom. If you don't see it on the home page, you can click on the shop button and just search for Acoustic and it'll pop up for you there, acoustic guitar. Also make sure you guys are subscribed and make sure that you are, uh, click the notification button so you get notification of the next time we do one of these acoustic guitar workshops for you. Um, and if you're just joining us, we do appreciate it. Steve and I are uh, doing the acoustic guitar workshop and um, everything will be available for you in a playlist there on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed there as well. Uh, dude, this is fascinating to me. What else, how else, or, you know, what else you got for us? Well, there's a couple strumming? things. First of all, again, to go back and reiterate what I just said, please don't think that strumming patterns are bad. Strumming patterns are just mathematical cons constructs that I I'm playing strumming patterns. Even when I'm playing ocean strumming, there's a pattern. It's just the patterns are changing, right? And they're, they're not pre-designed in my head. It's almost like improvisation where... I'm not thinking about going from pattern 17 to pattern 32 to pattern 1 to pattern 14. I'm not thinking of it that way. But please understand that there are songs. For instance, I was just thinking of when I played that little thing before Dan uh, was, was talking there. Um, I was thinking of Used to Love Her But I Had to Kill Her by Guns N' Roses. Mm -hmm. right? And it, 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 they use what I've always referred to as the eagle strum where it goes... <laughs> And it's a it's a actual strumming pattern. The difference is is that it's not like Slash has to play that pattern without change for the entire song, right? There's an underlying pattern to the song, no doubt about it. But it's not like there's no wiggle room to do other things throughout the song. And of course, he's going to. That's mm -hmm. what makes us human. So a lot of times when people learn patterns, they think if they strum something outside the norm of that particular pattern, that they've done something wrong. And that's not true at all. The, the only thing that I would consider wrong is if you lose the groove, right? If you lose the tempo and you're strumming, you know, at a different tempo or something like that, obviously that's not something that's going to be functional. But, you know, any song that you listen to, there are certain songs that have more, more freedom in its rhythm. And there are songs that are more structured, but even the more structured ones have space for this ocean strumming. So that's, that's the one thing I would say, the little preface to this, is that even if you think you know, about a song that really does have a strumming pattern, 
you still can apply this. So the next conversation I would have with this is that the other element of ocean strumming is the volume. If you think about the ocean, again, when you're listening to it, not just watching it, but when you're listening to the ocean, it changes. Sometimes it's loud and sometimes it's not. So there's another element of ocean strumming, which is learning how to think about how hard or soft you're hitting the strings. So the first conversation was how much or how little and in which places, right? Because you could strum a lot of downs or just a few downs or a lot of ups and no downs. You could do whatever you want with that. And again, I talk about that more in, in, in the course, but um, you can strum louder and softer as well, right? So if I was taking this thing and I was going, So I can add a real human dynamic to it by thinking about strumming less or more, but I can also think about the push, right? Strumming softer or louder. I love it, dude. This is awesome, man. Um, I don't want to stop. <laughs> well, that's, that's about all got I got you? for this. But, but it, you know, if you think about it, it, it what, what happens is the mentality is, and again, if you've been watching some of the other uh, videos that Dan and I have been doing, you have to get to a place in your playing where you have space to think and listen and react. And a lot of times we're so busy with our thought process of this chord, moving to this chord, and where am I at in the song? And, it, and that's why our strumming becomes patternized because it's easier to practice a pattern and develop that pattern than it is to allow the music to be music. Um, and again, not being disrespectful to patterns. It's just, it, it's a danger to fall into doing nothing but patterns because you can't respond to the music. If I'm, pl if I'm sitting around with other musicians and we start playing together, I, I don't know what musical situation we're going we're gonna to find ourselves in. We, we're playing together right now in, this, in, re in real time. Right. So when they start playing, I have to respond to that in a way that fits the situation I find myself in, right? There are some bands you play with where everything is aggressive and on 10. And then there's other times when you play something that, you know, I was, one of the greatest things I've always loved about playing live is when you're doing a jam in whatever song it might be. And some songs really don't have a lot of room for freedom. Some songs are just, they're structured and that's kind of what they are. But some songs you come across a part where maybe all of a sudden the drummer just drops to half volume, right? And the bass player drops down and now it's you and you're going to do your solo. And they've already given you a platform. They've already dropped that volume down and now you've got room to create something here for the audience. And then all of a sudden they start building it a little bit. And now you start building. It's a real thing that's happening musically. It's not just about learning a song and learning all the parts to the song or learning how to sing it properly or whatever. There's a real responsiveness that is just, it's, it's, it's indescribable. So that's what I want you to be thinking about is the dynamics of strumming a lot or strumming a little, and again, I'm generalizing that, but really that element and then strumming louder or softer is what gives the instrument, especially the acoustic guitar, the voice that it has. So when I'm playing something, I don't have to feel like I have to go, I don't have to strum at that dynamic and that volume all the time. See, I can build, I can ebb and flow with this thing trying to create a, a mood. And maybe that isn't the mood, right? Maybe the mood is... Maybe it's more driving. Well, that's okay. Then I'm going to have less of those dynamics. But I need to be aware of it, and I need to be able to respond when it isn't that, right? Because everything's mm -hmm. different. You know, if you're playing with a band, and you're playing 10 or 20 or 50 songs, which I have done many times before in a night... Um, you know, everything's a little different. So just think about that a little bit in your playing, not just in your strumming in general, but just, you know, this ocean concept can be applied all over the place to your, to your playing. Yeah. Let me ask you a follow-up question about that. Um, 
you mentioned playing 50 songs in a night. I'm curious, um, <clears throat> I have my own experience with this, but I'm curious from you, how important was learning lots of songs for your development as a guitar player? Well, for me personally, you know, I learned from songs. Like that's how I learned. My songs were my teacher. So, you know, we all learn vastly different, but that's how I learned was um, I didn't really have, you know, I tried guitar lessons and it didn't really work out. And so learning how to play songs by ear was kind of, to be honest with you, I think it was both the, the I mean, if I'm being completely honest, it was a blessing in, I know a million songs and I've learned a million things in my head about music and structure and styles and genres. The, the curse of it was, is in the early days, I never really developed myself. I just developed, a, I was, a, I was a, a machine at being able to learn songs. It wasn't until later that I learned, um, started working on myself. So if that kind of makes sense, yeah. but, but was it important? It was, it was in, vastly important. Just to give people some context, how many songs do you think you've learned? Oh, I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't, tens of thousands. I, I wouldn't even venture to guess. I mean, because think about it, it wasn't just what I needed. I mean, as a guitar teacher, and, and for people that don't know my history, and I'm not going to go into all that right now, but I have taught so many people guitar, not just virtually. Like now I live in this virtual world where people learn all over the world and that sort of thing. But there was a time for 25 years that I taught one-on-one -on -one or 10-on-one -on or 20-on-one -on or 30-on-one in physical classes all the time. And, you know, if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one lesson, you have 30 minutes to have this child or this adult come in, give them something to benefit them in the long run, and then give them something that they want to do, which is 99% of the time, some sort of song. You have to figure it out by ear as quickly as humanly possible and then translate that to them so they can learn it in 30 minutes. You have to turn all this around. So, you know, you're learning anything, like literally anything by anybody, any style of music. And, you know, you can't go, well, I, I can't, I don't know how that goes. I can't teach it to you. You know, they ask for it. You have to figure it out. You have to turn around and give it to them, write it down, whatever you need to do so they can practice it for the next week. Um, so I, I wouldn't even venture to guess between that and, you know, all the songs, you know, and then you get picked up for doing a tour or something like that. And, you know, they'll say, hey, you know, you got three weeks to learn our set list, which isn't bad, you know, but if it's stuff you're not familiar with, you got to really hammer down to learn it in a short amount of time or a, you know, a cover band, you know, you're going to do a fill in gig with a band and it's this Friday and it's Tuesday and they've got 40 <laughs> songs on their list and you know a few of them, but you don't know their arrangement. Like everybody does things a little different. So, you learn it as best you can in the keys that they want you to. And then you just watch everybody for changes and endings. And, you know, it's a whole different beast. Very cool. I bring that up because uh, learning songs is a big, important part of my whole musical education from childhood. Of course, my background was piano when I started and you don't just sit down at the piano and the teacher says, okay, let's learn a C scale. You know, the first thing you do is like, here's this little beginner piece by Mozart. And let's take your right hand and we're going to put it on the middle C and we're going to do, you know, like you don't learn in a vacuum. You, you learn by learning other people's music. And I think there's this tendency of like one or the other, either people are like, I just play songs or I'm all technique or I'm all skills and I do this thing because I don't want to interfere with my ability to uh, be myself and be expressive. But the reality is you really need both. You need to learn other people's stuff so you can learn from them, learn their techniques. You mentioned Slash earlier. Um, you know, you can learn everything you can from that guitar player and then you can move on to something else. And you have the lesson base, um, which, you know, teaches the technique and all the, if you want to learn theory and that kind of thing. I do want to mention guys that, uh, Steve has a songs course. It's really not even course; it's a membership. It's called, you can go to playsongs.com and it'll, uh, send you right over there. And it's hundreds of songs that Steve teaches you how to play. And uh, he's adding to that monthly. So if you'd like to join that, just go to playsongs.com. Um, also, if you are enjoying this video, you're enjoying, you really go deep on your acoustic guitar journey. Steve has a new course. It's called Acoustic Guitar. 
by Steve Stein, and that's available for you at guitarzoom.com. He goes into this ocean technique that we've discussed today, the bouncing lift and shift, the uh, different chord progressions, everything you would need to know A to Z on acoustic guitar, and um, it's available for you there at guitarzoom.com. What else, my friend? Well, that's pretty much it. You know, just getting you to think again a little differently about the way that you approach your rhythm and your strumming and things like that. You know, in the course, I certainly talk about strumming patterns as well, but I always try and follow strumming pattern discussion up with anti-strumming patterns, you know, which is what we're talking about right now, just so you really understand that you can't just rely on, you know, it's like just saying, I'm only going to learn the chords G and E minor, and I'm never going to learn anything else. Well, there's only so much you can do with that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, that's, that's all I've got for this is really just thinking about how to approach this. Go back and watch this again if you need to and, um, and really start just practicing that. And, and you don't need chords to practice this. You can just practice scratching, you know, just to develop those elements. And then once you've kind of got it in a real comfortable place, stick it on a chord and that's fine. Um, and the reason I'm not doing a chord is because if I'm doing D, then we're worried about not hitting the top two strings, but, you know, and then all this stuff starts and then you're not thinking about strumming anymore. You're thinking about, you know, like I've always thought about strumming is when I strum, like if I'm strumming a D chord, I just don't want this because it sounds horrible, right? That's what I don't want. Anything else is fair game. I know I want four strings. But it doesn't bother me if I hit five strings. It doesn't bother me if I hit three strings. And it doesn't really bother me if I hit six strings every once in a while. It's a dynamic change. You see what I mean? It's when you're just strumming everything. Again, the, the danger of rhythm, of strumming for a guitar player, is everything just being a static sound. It's just... It's just constant, same volume, same rhythm, same everything. I was thinking of the dude from uh, Ferris Bueller, that teacher going, Bueller, 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 right? <laughs> it's that, it's that thing. You know, where we've got to have some element of human in there to break us up from just that, that constant thing. Yeah, otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Okay, my friend. Thank you so much for this. Uh, guys, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and hit notify to be notified of the next acoustic guitar workshop session that Steve and I are going to be doing for you. We'll put everything together for you on a nice, neat, tidy playlist. In case you missed any of the previous se uh, sessions, you can check that out on the Steve Stein YouTube channel. You can check it out on the Guitar Zoom channel. We also have a Guitar Zoom songs channel where there's lots of songs that you can learn if you want to learn. Uh, how to play lots of different songs that are officially licensed by the bands and the artists that you love and have tablature that's actually accurate. You can join Play Songs with Steve Stein, which is available for you at playsongs.com. And if you'd like to get Steve's new course, it's called Acoustic Guitar by Steve Stein. It's available for you at the old guitarzoom.com. Steve, as always, my friend, it's been awesome. Thanks to all of you for being here. Really appreciate you taking your time to be with us today. We will see you in the next session. Thanks, everybody. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon, Dan. Okay, buddy. Bye.